friends, welcome back to my home. Welcome to today's video, this week's video. Um, I thought I would kick off this video with a little extension to last week's video. If you guys remember, I picked up these chai teas and I wanna make a nice little chai latte. We're gonna head down to the cellar, do a little bit of organizing. I just got through a, a big chunk of the canning I wanted to do for this year. And we also had a lot of other things going on within the same week or two. So my daughters and husband and I had been transporting all of the canned goods in their jars downstairs, but there's stuff that still needs to be um, dated on the top and needs to be kind of organized in our food cellar so we're gonna head down there but I thought let's make a little drink to take with us so one of these is a spiced apple and the other one is a pumpkin spice so obviously leaning very into autumn and fall and I actually cheated just a little bit and I opened a tea bag from each box and I smelled them <laughs> to try to get um, an idea of how they might taste and so I like how the spiced apple smells and I picked up this adorable mug. I think I showed you this also in the last um, video and it has a little topper on it. So it'd be perfect to take with us down into the cellar. So we're gonna go ahead and whip together a nice little latte and I'm gonna show you how I do it. And you can do this with any chai tea um, to make yourself a chai latte. The first thing that I did was just get some water heating in my tea kettle or my electric kettle and I put the tea bag into the cup so that it could steep and brew. I honestly didn't even set a timer for this. I just let it steep while I steamed the milk. And I'm gonna show you all a way to make steamed milk without having a espresso machine. And that is something I've actually been trying to master lately. It does take a little bit of practice but I'm going to show you the method that I'm using. There's a few different methods, but this is the one that I feel I get the most control over um, being able to steam it well. So I picked up this adorable little saucepan and I can leave it linked below for you all. For this latte, I'm mixing together a heavy cream and then also an almond milk half and half. And then I'm going to add in some chai spice. I think last winter we made that together. And I'm going to be just, I didn't really measure that. I think it maybe was a fourth teaspoon, something like that. And you wanna let it heat until you just start seeing the small little snakes of steam coming out of the milk. And you're going to work at frothing it and whisking it at the same time as you are heating it and you're gonna end up with fantastic steamed milk right on your stove top. It kind of is something you wanna work at just to get it perfected and a little bit um, perfect because you don't wanna burn the milk and you also want to have it nicely steamed at the same time. Full review, oh this is really hot. Hang on, I have to grab it a different way. <laughs> that glass gets hot. Full review, this tastes like a fall day in your mouth. It is so good. I'm excited to try the pumpkin one. This tea brand nailed it and you add in a little bit of the chai spice. Oh, it's just perfect. It's got that apple flavor. Oh, and the smell even hits you before you get to sip it. So good. Mm delicious. I'm excited to share this week's sponsor with you all, Colon Broom. I have been very passionate about gut health for quite a few years now and I was really excited whenever I found out about Colon Broom because the main fiber that is used in Colon Broom is psyllium husk and it's something that I'm very familiar with and I have been trying to incorporate into my diet for years. Psyllium husk is the essential fiber in colon broom premium. It works as a bulk forming laxative that could benefit diarrhea, constipation, and excess bloating. It's also known to help regulate blood sugar levels, which is really huge for me as someone that's very sensitive to sugar and often eat a low sugar diet. This just goes right along with what I'm already trying to do for my body 
and it's a great helpful tool. Capsmax is a powerful metabolism booster that promotes internal heat generation. It may help support appetite control and reduce sugar and carb cravings. Not only does Colon Broom just improve your overall well-being, it is so, so tasty. I really love the strawberry flavor that they have. It's something that I actually kind of crave the flavor of, oddly enough, and it goes down so easy. Since Colon Broom Premium contains vitamin B6, it helps tiredness and reduces fatigue. Discover the epic sale going on right now and get a great 60% off discount. Tap on the link in the description box below to take advantage of these deals. They won't last long. And thanks again to Colin Broom for sponsoring this week's video. Can you spot what doesn't belong on the shelf? <laughs> I just sat my tea up there. But this is my storage cellar, um, food cellar area. I'm not gonna go into great detail. I will link a full tour below that I chat about a lot of things that are down here. Um, but today, I'm just mainly going to be taking you with me as I'm cleaning things up and organizing. We had stored our corn when we were doing corn in this bonus refrigerator. So there's like corn husks all over the place in here. The girls had brought the pickles and stuff and my husband was helping them bring pickles and salsa and corn and other odds and ends that I did um, down here. So like this stuff is just kind of all jammed in here. If you hear a funny noise, it's this old refrigerator. It just purrs along, but it, we're really thankful for it. <laughs> anyway, um, so there's like just a lot of just shoved into these. As you can see, this looks a little more organized than this does. And over here, like I had done some green beans, that all got shoved in there. The pickles are kind of supposed to live down here, not really up here. And then we did get some empty jars. Yeah, like the salsa, they stashed all the salsa over here. I like it to live more like with the tomato-y stuff um, slash in this area because it's easier for my daughters to reach. And we did clear out a lot of empty jars and refilled them, so that was really good. I know on the day that we really did a ton of canning, I cleared out almost all of the empty jars. You can see there's a few here, but there was a lot of empties on this shelf. I also have some empties up through here on the top of the shelf, and then I have some on the side but I am planning to focus on some winter canning this year. Um, and that will include things like more shredded chicken. There's a little bit right here, but we've been using that fairly heavily. Um, so I wanna get some chickens from a local um, butcher or chicken farm that we can get pasture raised chickens from. And then I also wanna work on canning a nice stash of beans. I don't have a whole lot. I think I may have a um, little bit down here next to my canned butter. I've got some canned chickpeas and then a little bit of like some kidney beans. Um, but I love to do my own black beans, just some things that have been on my to-do list that are great little wintertime projects. So all of that to be said, um, I think that this bottom shelf is mainly the mess. We need to sweep. That's a big bag of potatoes. It's fine living there for the moment. This is a big bag of carrots. Um, and I've noticed in the last little bit that they are like really sprouting on the ends are still looking kind of green. So I need to get those canned up fairly soon. Um, I wanted to do some different sizes. We'll get into that another day, another video. Um, but that's why that's sitting there. And then panning around this way, um, there's stuff that needs to be swept in here. This is just some plastic utensils that I store really high. My daughter's brought down. Um, this here, I will leave these linked below in case they're still a really good price. I don't know, I didn't check recently, but a couple weeks ago, Amazon was having a deal on these pint-sized freezer containers. There you can see them on the side. Um, this is 240 in this box, which might sound crazy, but for some odd reason, they were marked down to 
$16 and that's normally what a 50 count costs for these. So I was like, of course, I needed some more and we're gonna just go ahead and spend $16 for 240 instead of just 50. So we have this massive box of them. I do use them to freeze um, soups and stuff like that. So anyway, all of that to say, I don't know if I'm gonna even be able to put them on the shelf. They may just hang out in that box for now, which is fine. They're not really in anybody's way to be walking around down in here. Um, and that sort of thing. So I think I have a few odds and ends on the other side where all of my herbs and stuff are. But besides that, I'm just gonna be moving some jars and chatting with y'all as I do that. As much as I would love for the way that I store all of my canned goods to be the same all the time and be just constantly replacing the same things, that's just not how it generally works when it comes to food storage. There's so much shifting and moving of things because you're out with the old and with the new, you're using up the old stuff and you're putting the new stuff towards the back so that you're using the old stuff and adjusting the rows as you bring in new things that you need to stick in an orderly fashion and then maybe your family goes through a phase of eating a bunch of pickles or eating a bunch of corn or you know something that they clear out a huge section and so you end up needing to slide things over so that it makes sense and for me I have three daughters and a lot of times I send them down to grab me an ingredient or something for whatever we're eating and so in that process they have to be able to reach the jars. So what I tend to do is put a lot of things higher on the shelf that I come down for. So a lot of times if I'm going to come down and collect, you know, six different jars for a soup I'm making, um, a lot of times I'm the one grabbing shredded chicken and broth and things like that. Whereas if it's a veggie side or something pickled, a lot of times I'm sending my daughters down for those things as I'm cooking something else in the kitchen. So if that all makes sense, um, it's just what works best for us. So not everything is in a perfect category, like all the veggies together, all the fruit together, all the chicken items together. It's just more organized in a manner that works good for our family to access it. Pickles are something that I do try to do on a yearly basis just because um, once they've been stored, you know, more than 12 months, you do have more of a risk of them getting soft. And so having fresh pickles done every year means that we always have a good crunchy pickle. And so I started in to the beginning of this year thinking I wasn't going to do very many pickles. And in the process of the week we did pickles, my daughters actually inhaled the last couple jars of what I had done last year. And so I was like, you know what? This is such a great snack. They can eat some cheese with it. It's really a good school snack since we homeschool. You know, there's we take breaks for snacks. And so having something that we can stop and quickly have a healthy little snack um, like pickles is really great and I mentioned this in my last video when I shared my dill pickle recipe um, but I also use the pink mineral salt in my pickles so um, they are getting a good dose of minerals with that as well which I really love that factor in being able to make your own home canned goods you get to decide what goes in them and everyone in your household benefits greatly from that. The other thing I love about having canned goods is no one, or I haven't had anyone, turn down a nice little box or basket of some home canned goods. It's a great hostess gift. It's a great gift to send home with people if they've been at your house, just giving them a little treat from your pantry. Um, that's one reason I really enjoy having a lot of extra canned goods because I'm able to share them with others and even introduce others to the idea of home canning because I think a lot of people are very intimidated by that and 
it's really not that hard and I know many of you have tried your first canning projects in the last couple of years and have discovered the joy of it. So if you haven't dipped your toe in, I so encourage you to give it a try. This week I had to head to Aldi, so I thought I would take you all along with me and I'm going to be doing some of these shop and hauls or shop and preps in the midst of the other content in my videos and they may not be individual videos. Um, we will see as I'm mixing things up, but I just had a lot of meal prepping to do later in this week. and. Um, I'm going to also be working on some bulk baking and some other things. So I knew that I needed to head out and just collect some different fresh veggies for sides and whatnot. We've been trying to do better about eating greens in our house. I feel like that's an ebb and flow. There's times that we do salads and then there's times we kind of get away from it. And so we're in a mode of trying to get more salads in and it's actually a veggie that my husband really enjoys is eating a salad. So if that's something he enjoys, I definitely wanna have the things around for him to make them and to keep everybody's systems running well, especially going into the fall season. Another thing I love to grab is avocados whenever I'm at Aldi, if they are ripe. And even if they're not, I'll set them on my table and just let them ripen. Um, but their avocados generally are half the price of a lot of other markets and stores in my area. And so as you can see, I was getting a lot of fresh veggies and just getting ready to stir fry some things and focus on our healthy eating with the cold and flu season coming around. We also made a ton of salsa like you saw. So keeping tortilla chips around to eat that is something now I'm going to be doing throughout the winter. It's just a great snack that I can keep on hand and we can also make nachos with it and melt some cheese over it as well. It's just one of those staples in our house that generally when I have salsa, we keep it around. We did run out this past um, year, like towards the end of the summer we ran out. So being able to restock that in pretty quick order was nice to do. I am grabbing some beans here and I, I every time I get beans at the store, I just remind myself once again that I need to get canning my own dried beans again. I don't have very many on the shelf as you saw. And so that is a winter project. I think I may have mentioned that um, earlier, but I, that is a winter project that I'm going to take you all with me on. We're going to have a big bean day <laughs> and we are going to can different types of beans. A lot of people don't realize this, but you can actually can beans from their dry form. You just measure, measure the right amount of beans to water in the jar. You put it in the canner and it's literally that easy. Um, but it's just one of those things you got to take time to do. And I just haven't gotten the time to do it in the last year. Since I was going to be doing some bulk baking this week, I stocked up on butter here at Aldi. Um, their butter is a pretty good price in comparison to a lot of other stores and so I just decided to get what I needed for all the baking I was going to be doing. Just as a little treat, I grabbed a jug of Stokes cold brew. My husband and I both really love it. It's just one of those things that it is usually a bit more budget friendly to be using your coffee grounds at home instead of buying cold brew <laughs> or making your own cold brew, but we really love the flavor of it. And so on occasion, I will grab a jug of it just for us to enjoy. Again, with the bulk baking and some of the other freezer prep I needed to do this week, was planning to do some freezer um, breakfast sandwiches. So I knew I was gonna need a nice pile of eggs. All right, 
now that we're back home, I thought I would show you a couple of things that I picked up. I did also go to Walmart and a few local shops um, just to pick up a couple of other things. But most of this I think you saw while we were shopping in Aldi. And I did actually go through their fall section. They have gotten a few more things since I was there last and filmed with you all. One of the things I picked up was this adorable sort of pumpkin shaped gravy boat. But to be honest, I think this is so cottage-esque. It's so cute. I probably will use it year round just because it's so unique and really neat looking. And I think the handle will work whether I do it right away or I when I change out for like winter decor or something, it'll work great to hang on there. But I just think it's going to be so cute and obviously practical for gravy and sauces and things like that. I really like using gravy boats even for like when I make a certain um, cream sauce for like over chicken or something like that. It's a nice little tool to use for that. I also picked up, it fell down in here under my chocolate chips, <laughs> um, another line of candles has come in to Aldi and it's these really pretty amber jars and right now I am super into amber. I don't know, or amber glass. Um, I don't know if you can see, but I have a little acorn up there. If you saw my last video, whenever I was decorating these shelves, you probably saw that, but especially getting candles with amber glass, it's so glowy. It just gives a whole other layer to the fall decor. Anyways, they had a couple different scents, and this one is the cinnamon pumpkin, which in my opinion was for sure the best. It's just really cute. It would make a super cute gift too because it has this nice um, metal lid on top. So I was happy with those little finds besides the groceries. Then at Walmart, I just got a few things like trash bags um, and some Epsom salts and just odds and ends that we needed. And speaking of the fall decorating I did, I had shown you all of these candlestick holders that my dad made for my mom when they were dating and they were recently going through some old boxes and found them and so I'm so excited to have them. I'm gonna write on the bottom where they came from and everything that way. One day, one of my daughters can really enjoy having them in their home, but I didn't have any candlesticks so I um, looked at Walmart and they have these beautiful, I don't know, I wanna call them like ribbed. <laughs> I don't know if they have a really oh yeah it says decorative ribbing and they are taper candles you can see they kind of are like a burnt or kind of an orangish color and i think for fall they are going to look so beautiful in these candlestick holders so i thought this was such a cute score especially from walmart sometimes walmart you can find the coolest little things there and then my daughter my oldest daughter made a suggestion a couple weeks ago and i've kept forgetting about it um, and then I was looking for some pens at Walmart and saw these there and decided to go ahead and grab one. It's just a little erase board you can put on your refrigerator because she said, mom, why don't you just make a little note or something on the refrigerator that tells us what is around to snack on? Because I do make a lot of homemade snacks and other things like that. And sometimes it's just not as easy as going to the snack cupboard and opening up and seeing chips. Sometimes it's like bars I've made in the refrigerator or something like that. So I thought I'm gonna give this a try. I, there's some magnets I think I can put on the back of it to stick it right to the refrigerator. It has a little clip to hold it. It was only a couple of dollars. So we're gonna give that a try. I've actually thought about doing this as well for my deep freezers. If you guys have been watching a long time, you know that sometimes I take masking tape, write what's in my deep freezers on the masking tape. Um, but I think that having a dry erase board on the top of the deep, deep blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but I think that having a dry erase board on top of the deep freezer could be really helpful because I could just literally take my finger and erase something when I take it out of the deep freezer and it would just really streamline being able to remember what is in my deep freezer. So I've been thinking about that, but we're gonna give this a try for the snacking. One other thing that I grabbed at a local grocery store is these two seasonal teas. 
They're from the brand Twinnings Tea, and it's their chai line, which I already love. The chai tea packs or tea bags from this line, but they have a spiced apple and a pumpkin spice. And I thought this would be so yummy to make chai lattes with throughout this fall season. I'm so excited to give these a try. They were just there on display and I grabbed these two. These candlestick holders, I just was so excited to get put together because of how special they are to me. And it's just, I am such a crafty person to begin with. So when I can get something that was made by my parents or my grandparents, they are just such treasures to me because I know that it took the time and effort for that person to create that and no one is gonna make it just like they did. And so having those special handmade things in my home, I just really love having things like that around. And then I put together the little whiteboard. It did come with some sticky magnets I could put on the back. And I'm actually contemplating also writing the like weekly menu on this as well. If you do this or something similar to this, I would love to hear about it in the comments. Like what system works best for you to sort of keep track of what you have in your kitchen. Um, as silly as it may sound, when you are someone that works from home and you homeschool and you have many other things that you do, I just don't always remember the things that I have around. And so I'm just hoping that this helps out with that. I think that it will. And I think that I may actually enjoy keeping my meal plan on here too. I know a lot of people keep grocery lists on a whiteboard like this, but I do that in the notes of my phone just because I can add it anywhere I'm at. Um, I can stop and throw something on my grocery list in my phone. So I definitely think I'll keep that system up, but this is something that everyone in the household can see. All right, so now we're heading in to the bulk baking that I wanted to tackle this week. And this recipe is, I wouldn't say the most famous off of my channel, but one of them. <laughs> There's a few others that people often remark that they make over and over again, but these are the best chocolate chip cookies ever. And I am not just saying that. They are so good. They're my mom's go-to recipes, what we grew up eating, and they are just uh, delicious. I can't even put it all into words other than anybody that is in my family and extended family knows that somebody's making these. They get eaten like no other. And I've had so many subscribers comment and say that this is now their go-to chocolate chip cookie recipe because they are just incredible. So they're pretty simple in the fact that it's just butter, sugar, eggs, vanilla, you know, when you're starting out mixing everything together. But the secret ingredient in these is the instant pudding packet. And you can use vanilla, that's what I use for my chocolate chip cookies. Um, I use a vanilla or a French vanilla pudding packet in this, but, you can actually swap this recipe up very easily. So say you wanted to make double chocolate chip cookies. All you have to do is use a chocolate pudding packet instead of the vanilla with your chocolate chips and you have a double chocolate chip cookie. So delicious. Another thing my mom used through the years was pistachio pudding and you know, maybe pistachios aren't really your thing, but if you enjoy pistachio, um, it is a really fun way to make a pistachio cookie without much effort. Um, I'm trying to think of a few of the other flavors she's used. I think she's used a butterscotch pudding as well. Oh, and lemon. So, you know, if you use pistachio or lemon during the spring and summer months, you know, you can just use the same cookie recipe all year round and just change out the type of pudding that you're adding in. And other than that, it is a fairly simple recipe. It's just that pudding makes the texture and the flavor just unreal. So 
so delicious. So like I said, I'm doing a bulk baking version of this. So I'm actually doing the recipe four times. And this already makes a fair amount of cookies. I would say it's a bit bigger than your average recipe, chocolate chip cookie recipe. Um, it makes a pretty good amount to begin with. And so making it times four <laughs> really gave me a lot of cookies. But I decided in the process of doing this that knowing around the size that my mixer is, I actually did two double batches just to make it all fit in my mixer well. So I mixed up the first batch and I got out a bowl that I could just dump it all into and then I went ahead and mixed up the second batch. And as we are going into the fall and winter months, I know that I'll be baking more. I just tend to bake more. I don't know if it's just because of the idea that it warms up my kitchen and my home whenever I've got the oven running or we're just life is a little slower in the winter months it could be that I just remember my mom doing a lot of baking in the winter months too and so maybe it's just something that is instilled in me that whenever it's cold outside <laughs> you need to have something yummy baked um, sitting around in the kitchen for anyone that comes in and may want something just a little bit cozy and comforting but either way I know that I'm going to be doing a whole lot more baking and something that's been on my mind lately is as a Christian to be the hands and feet of Jesus and I think that our society, our world, if you want to say, has so forgotten this. You give somebody something and a lot of times they question your motives or they question why you're giving them something. And I just still encourage you to give and to do random acts of kindness for people around you. And it does so much for your own heart along with spreading joy and light into the world. Whether you're buying somebody's groceries in front of you or, you know, buying an older couple's um, meal when you're out to eat. They see them sitting at a table or just baking something yummy for your neighbors and that was part of why I was doing so much baking this week is because my daughters and I were talking we've been talking about this whole thing of being the hands and feet and so I actually decided to pick up some fun little baggies and I'm calling these I'm dubbing these <laughs> the name cookie care packs and we got these fun little baggies to make some care packs to hand out to some of the older people in our church and just give them a little bit of sunshine and we did it actually on a Sunday morning and as I'm baking you'll see my husband come through and steal cookies he thought he was being funny but um, they yeah I mean they really do go through all of go through a lot of cookies whenever I have these around like I said they are a favorite but we decided to make up these packages and just hand them out. So I went to Hobby Lobby and I found these brown bags and the really cool thing about them is the inside of them is lined. So if the person that receives this just keeps the cookies in here and as they are eating them, you know, they can keep them in the bag because the top has a wire closure to where they can close them and just keep them right in here. And it was just perfect. This was all Hobby Lobby had. I think there was two packs of six, so we did 12 packs in total. One of them, um, my daughters ran over to an elderly neighbor and passed that along to her. And then the others, like I said, got passed out at church. Last year for Christmas, I wanna say, my husband um, gave me the Canon Ivy. I'm a big paper lover. I love doing paper crafting and things like that and he knew that and so you can actually print little pictures off of this mobile um, picture printer and it's something you can throw in your bag and whatnot and as I was thinking about handing these out we don't know everybody at our church and it may be that someone new is given a pack of cookies and so just to make a connection to the faces I decided to print a little picture of our family and attach it to a tag with some ribbon 
to each of the baggies so that they can make the connection the next time they see us um, and we have that new friendship or acquaintance began which is in my heart in this I just love making new friends I love being able to brighten someone's day and so that is what I attached to the bags and then on the inside I had this little pack of these cards with verses there that had just little encouraging verses sort of like a bookmark or a passed along card and I tucked one of them in each of the cookie bags um, just for them to have a bit of extra encouragement and then we packaged these all up and once I had it all packaged up I actually put them in a big basket to be able to carry them into church with me and we were able to actually do most of this before church which was nice being able to pass them out and give them to others now the other thing I did I put eight cookies in each bag and these were aimed towards either older singles or older couples so I figured that would be a great amount for an older couple to share or an older single to enjoy for a while and so I wanted the cookies to be able to be seen through the little window that the bag had so I put a nice little fluff of some paper tissue paper in the bottom of the bag I hope that this encouraged you to just do random acts of kindness they don't have to be this fancy they don't have to um, have special packaging I'm just someone that enjoys doing wrapping gifts and paper crafting and packaging um, but I just encourage you to just even smile at those around you this week just find ways to brighten someone else's day and I know that it will encourage you as well so if you are new here don't forget to hit the subscribe button thank you for hanging out with me this week I enjoyed spending time with you I would love to hear from you in the comments below and I will see you all in my next video